Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Friday, August 13th. As always, the thoughts in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information for where you are. Still watching our two systems here, a Tropical Depression Fred, and what is now being called Potential Tropical Cyclone 7, formerly known as Invest 95L that we've been talking about for the last couple of days. We're gonna go for Fred first again, as we've been doing. This is the slightly more zoomed in loop here showing what continues to be a disorganized system. No real surprises again today and the expectation has been that Fred would continue struggling with the various obstacles in its way and that continues to be the case. We have the weak low level center or what's left of it currently located right about there and it's actually moving on to the northern coastline of Cuba this morning as it has continued just generally westward since yesterday. One of the reasons it's moving on shore is because it's starting to elongate just a little bit toward the northeast and we might see it waffle around a little bit. One part goes on shore and we may see a new center try to reform toward the northeast as everything kind of heads toward the Florida Straits over the next 24 hours and one of the reasons for that is all the deep moisture and thunderstorm activities on the eastern side still a little bit of southwesterly shear here and the the low level center has been displaced to the west of the mid-level troughing for the last couple of days and so we might see some attempt at regenerating a new center within the deeper moisture over the next couple of days and we'll see how that goes but either way likely to stay pretty weak for the next while this is the water vapor loop showing again this upper trough near the Florida Peninsula that we've been tracking. And as we discussed a few days ago, this trough has indeed weakened over the last couple of days. And so the flow has shifted. It was out of the west aloft, now it's more out of the south. And wind shear is starting to lessen, but as we talked about, it also has not gone away and likely will not go away. And so we still have light to moderate shear here. And Fred, had it been a more robust vortex by this point, could have been intensifying already on its way toward the Florida Straits, but given the number that Hispaniola did on the system, it is still too weak to really kickstart redevelopment. So as of this morning or this afternoon, it is not redeveloping yet. And as this continues into the Florida Straits, shear will persist and chances for significant restrengthening seem to be decreasing somewhat as time goes on. Every, every passing day that this fails to develop further, makes it less likely to do so as it heads into the Gulf of Mexico. Here's the current GFS forecast for the 850 millibar flow showing where Fred is currently centered near the coastline of Cuba and this general wave envelope here is just going to continue propagating west-north-westward into the Florida Straits and then into the eastern Gulf of Mexico over the next couple of days. You'll see hints on the model of the elongation I'm talking about where the current center kind of moves over western Cuba, but we get this extension out toward Andros Island, and we start to get hints of redevelopment of rotation over the water. And so we could see a slight jump northward as this moves toward the Florida Keys. You'll see perhaps the redevelopment of a new center off southern Florida here by Saturday evening. This won't matter a whole lot in terms of impacts to South Florida as we're expecting maximum uh, wind gusts and heavy rain to move into the peninsula and gusts could be in the ballpark of 30 to 40 miles per hour even if fred is still just a tropical depression uh, but really watching the rainfall on this eastern side as there's plenty of moisture here that's the primary impact we're looking for and this is going to continue toward the northwest eventually turning toward the florida panhandle by sunday and early monday and we do see hints of redevelopment into a tropical storm on the gfs some slight strengthening possible and you can see if I show you the moisture plot here in the mid-levels, uh, there's kind of a mixture in terms of uh, the environmental conditions. We do get dry air on the south side as wind will still be out of the south aloft. So a lot of the moisture will remain displaced east and north of this low level center according to these model forecasts. And so this is not an ideal situation for Fred to strengthen significantly. We could see some reorganization, but likely not a significant amount. So right now NHC continues to forecast maximum winds of about 50 miles per hour by the time this makes landfall. It could also be weaker than that if it fails to organize at all. Right now trends continue in the direction of Fred being less organized. This is the European model just brief briefly showing the other main model that we tend to look at a lot and showing a similar look to the GFS here. Weak tropical storm or tropical depression heading into the Florida Panhandle on late Sunday. Similar location again, most of the heavy weather to the north and east of where the center tracks. 
NHC forecast, uh, again showing the same general idea. Tropical storm warning is now out for the Florida Keys. There is the possibility of sustained winds of about 40 miles per hour or greater, which would be tropical storm force. And so the warning is out there just in case. Watch is beginning to creep up the coastline and we will continue to see more watches expanding northward across the coastline of Florida as time goes on. Still watches for the coastline of Cuba as well, though the reconnaissance aircraft in the area has not been observing tropical storm force winds so far today, so that has not been upgraded to a warning. Again, peak winds here are currently forecast to be about 50 miles per hour. That is a step down from the 60 to 65 mile per hour winds that NHC was forecasting during the last couple of days. So the storyline today is that the trend is toward weaker winds as Fred has failed to redevelop so far. Still a chance for some restrengthening here, but the big uh, concern will be the rainfall and the potential for flash flooding in areas that could receive even more than six inches of rain here in Orange in the South Florida area. And again, with rainfall, isolated amounts could be much higher than this. If a trailing band of storms continuously moves over the same local area, that's something that we have a hard time forecasting in the scientific community. So you can always get higher amounts than are shown in maps like this, just by bad luck, essentially. Now we're gonna switch back out to the big view and look at the next storm coming down the line. This is the one we've been discussing for a couple of days, Invest 95L now being labeled a potential tropical cyclone by the National Hurricane Center. And again, this terminology means that the system is not yet a tropical cyclone, but it is expected to become one soon and impact land areas, in this case, the Leeward Islands. And so this is now something that NHC is generating warnings on. This is the close-in look at the system, and over the last couple of days, we've been watching it consolidate a little bit. We've gone from a highly elongated circulation to something that is a little bit more symmetric looking. You can see rotation here in the low-level cloud field, very strong easterlies on the north side, and just now starting to see some hints of wrapping southwest or west wind on the south side, but it's been difficult for this to close off over the last couple of days and it's been mostly an open wave with a very tight curvature and at this point it's still unclear whether it is actually closed if we look at the latest ASCAT pass from about 8:30 a.m eastern time you'll see the strong winds on the north side and a very strong kink in the curvature of the flow but it's unclear whether there are actually west winds on the south side and this does not quite meet the definition of well defined that the national hurricane center uses to call systems tropical depressions or storms. So this is not yet being labeled as such, but it's likely to achieve that status soon as it continues heading westward. You'll see that the thunderstorm activity is still on the western side of where the low level center is right now. And that's because of continuing easterly shear, which I can show you on the water vapor imagery. We continue to see upper level clouds streaming out of the east southeast here, pushing all of this thunderstorm activity off to the left hand side of your screen. And there's some dry air here in darker gray getting pushed in by the shear. And so this is contributing to the general disorganization of this system. It's not a, it's not a very strong system at the moment. And it has been struggling for the last few days to deal with this shear. As this had, heads toward the Leeward Islands, we could see environmental conditions change somewhat. And I'm gonna show you how that works here on the GFS Ensemble mean. We're going to show you some 850 millibar vorticity in color here, indicating where the maximum rotation is, indicating the center of what we're gonna call PTC7, Potential Tropical Cyclone 7. And the barbs here indicate the upper level wind flow at 200 millibars. So right now you can see this strong easterly flow moving toward the system, causing the shear that it's been dealing with. And as we head forward in time, we're going to see that easterly flow perhaps lighten a little bit as the system approaches the Leeward Islands, as we've been discussing for the last couple of days. And then what's going to come into play quickly is the development of this upper level trough to the northwest of the system, which is going to start switching the wind shear direction from the easterly uh, vector to more of a southwesterly type of shear. You'll see that as the system moves toward the general vicinity of Puerto Rico, as now we have westerly flow to the north of the system and we could start getting westerly shear instead of easterly shear. So we get a switch in the direction. Now the key point there is that somewhere between the time when there's easterly shear and the time that there's westerly shear, that shear kind of goes to zero at some point in between while the direction is changing. So at some point, as this is near the Leeward Islands, it's kind of under this ridge axis aloft. And so there will be a brief time when wind shear drops off to low values, perhaps even just a 12 or 18 hour window 
as this is near the islands. And that would be the opportunity uh, that we would most likely see organization of PTC7 into a tropical storm with maybe slightly higher winds than it has now. Right now winds are about 30 or 35 miles per hour at a maximum. If it's going to intensify over the next couple of days near the islands, this would be the time when it would do so when shear is lessened a little bit. Now we're expecting the track to stay generally toward the west-northwest over the next few days. This is the 500 millibar steering flow in the mid-levels according to the GFS Ensemble. For early Saturday, you can see where PTC7 would be located. We have general ridging to the north of the system, continuing to direct it generally westward or west-northwestward, again through the Leeward Islands and then potentially close to the Greater Antilles, Puerto Rico, Hispaniola. And if this does uh, move toward the south over Hispaniola, it would be probably unlikely to survive given the combination of land interaction with the island and the shear that is likely to come down associated with this upper level trough. We've seen what that combination has kind of done to Fred as it crossed Hispaniola and that island is, is no friend to any tropical disturbance trying to come through. Now, there is a chance that it moves north of the islands instead, and at this point it would become a question of how strong is the system by the time it gets past the Leeward Islands. In this part of the world, if a system is weak, it tends to stay weak if it's encountering any kind of hostile environment, like even light or moderate shear. It's difficult for weak systems to survive this part of the Caribbean and the Atlantic Ocean, but a stronger system might have a chance of surviving and becoming a problem later on down the road. Now this is the GFS Ensemble depiction of what each member thinks, uh, where each member thinks the storm will be and how strong it will be. And this cluster of red numbers here indicates the swath of possible locations that the GFS Ensemble thinks PTC7 will be in. And we basically have two groups of members. We have a lot of members that are very weak and stay toward the west and move south of or over Hispaniola as a very weak systems that would tend to track farther south. And then we have a group of a few members maybe about 20% of the ensemble members that do strengthen a little bit and move north of the islands and show signs of organization as they travel west-northwestward. And we've seen this group develop in the last few model runs. Uh, it was not showing solutions like this yesterday. So chances are slightly increasing that we could see a strengthening storm north of the Leeward Islands. However, given the short window of favorable conditions during that time when the shear lessens for just maybe a half day, maybe a day maximum, we're unlikely to see, say, a developing hurricane here. It seems unlikely to be particularly strong during the next three days at least. Now, if something here is organized enough to survive and move toward the Bahamas or somewhere else in the Western Atlantic, it could be that it's able to survive some of the shear and live to find more favorable conditions in several days. But at that point, we're getting too far into the forecast and there's too much uncertainty there at this time. This is the current NHC forecast, the first one issued for the system. And we can see that there are now tropical storm watches for parts of the Leeward Islands as the general track is forecast to be through there. Now, right now, the Hurricane Center is going with a more southerly track expecting the system to remain generally weaker and move into the Greater Antilles where weakening would likely occur and possibly dissipation of the system. They're carrying the track all the way across Hispaniola and into the Bahamas. But again, we've seen how Fred has struggled to remain a defined storm after taking a similar track. And if we actually see this kind of a track over Hispaniola, we're unlikely to see anything particularly strong here uh, at this point in time. But we'll be watching carefully to see if a track north of the islands occurs instead, in which case it might be a concern down the road but we're still several days away from that. So we need to see how strong it looks by the time it gets to the islands. Right now, we are looking at something that is a little bit better organized over the last few days, but still struggling with dry air and shear. Uh, so we'll see perhaps 40 mile per hour winds, tropical storm force in this section of islands, but again, not expecting a developing hurricane or anything rapidly strengthening. So bottom line, both of these storms pretty weak, likely to stay that way, both of them for the next few days, both dealing with environmental conditions that are somewhat hostile to quick intensification, but we are going to see impacts from both to land areas in the case of the Leeward Islands, showers and gusty winds, and potential for flash flooding over the next few days, potentially more rain for Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, and the U.S. Virgin Islands. And in Florida and the Western Bahamas and Cuba, continuing rainfall likely expected over this swath moving toward the northwest over the next few days perhaps some elevated winds along the Florida Peninsula and Florida Panhandle if Fred is able to reorganize some over the next couple of days. Stay safe this weekend, everyone. That's it for now.
Thanks for watching.